Hello, people of the world watching vehicle reviews on the internet. Welcome to this, the 2024 Land Rover Defender 110. Today, I'm gonna get this panda wagon up in the air. We're a nerd out in tech specs, see how it is constructed, and then go play with it in the dirt. Panda, there was a reference to, never mind. Oh, it's neat. It says Defender on it. Man, this thing has got such short overhangs. There's literally no pipe to it. It's just, it's all tip. Uh, must have been cold when they made this muffler. Toe hitch, I don't even wanna try to pull that out. Well, let's get a weep hole on the bottom of the spare tire carrier. This Defender, as it's equipped, is capable of towing 8,201 pounds. It's literally printed on a sticker on the side of it so you can't be confused. Also has a max tongue weight of 771 pounds. Check out these rings. Also, look at these tail lights from down below. That's crazy, it's like a holographic image. Outback, the Defender utilizes an all aluminum in construction multi-link rear system suspension with the optional adaptive air suspension uh, dampers are made in Germany and because this is the X dynamic SE package it's paired with a electronic auto locking rear differential with a 3.55 final drive ratio who makes you Advantech, ah, Danish Spicer. Look at the size of that bladder. <laughs> no human being ever. Advantech Danish Spicer axles as well. Rear anti sway bar measures in at 30 millimeter in diameter. I think that's the largest rear one I've ever measured. There are three different configurations for the L663 Land Rover Defender. The one you see here is the 110 right in the middle. There's also the shorter two-door 90, which I think is the best looking, and the much longer 130, in case you get a haul a bunch of people. This one is equipped, weighs in at 5,165 pounds. It's all hairy cardboard on a land, this is a Defender. Why did they decide that? Eberspecher. <laughs> what? Nice. Contributing to the sound of this thing is an approximately 76 millimeter in diameter or three inch SAE exhaust mid pipe. transmission goes in this Defender 110. It is the ZF8 HP 76 eight speed automatic with a maximum torque input rating of 760 newton meters or 560 pound feet, well above what this engine produces. It is paired to a two speed transfer case, part of the full time four wheel drive system with an auto locking center differential and a low range of 2.91 to one ratio. I have to sneeze. I'm gonna squallow it. I don't know if you can swallow a sneeze, I just did. Up front, the Defender has a rather interesting looking all aluminum short long arm front suspension. You see that adaptive air damper? It's attached to this little aluminum salad fork, which has its own pivot point right here, independent from that ball joint right there that is attached to the knuckle itself right here. Dual ball joints right here on the bottom of the knuckle. Pretty rugged aluminum skid plate. Whoa, it says Defender on it. That's sick. See a little bit of the front differential right here. It is an open diff, but it is a brake based system. So it'll simulate its locking abilities. Front anti-sway bar measures in at 33 millimeter in diameter. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me, but a spare tire. Ready? Go. Okay. Wow. Oh my God. Those are crazy. Those are amazing brakes. That was incredible. I was not expecting that. The, like the braking force alone hurt. Like I felt the G's stopping me. Superb. Absolutely superb brakes. That braking was just made possible thanks to an enormous set of six piston monoblock calipers that are painted in a flat black. They're just like subtle, massive big brake kit with a 14.3 inch or 363 millimeter front rotor. The wheels, they're a 22 by nine with a positive 43 millimeter offset wrapped in a 275, 45, 22 inch continental cross contact tire. 
Oh, my mistake. This is the Cross Contact RX. It's prescription strength. 22s would not be my first choice for a Defender, but this is a $2,200 optional package and it's hard not to love a classic five spoke. Well, it's a hairy cardboard inner fender liner. Oh, the front's plastic. A little duct work in the front bumper cover to cool the brakes. Nice, easy to access jack points. Hairy cardboard in the rear as well. Out back, you only get a little single piston floating caliper with a 350 and a half millimeter or a 13.8 inch rear rotor. The wheel and tire are the same size as you have up front. In the name of science, I am now going to give it the beans. Full steering assessment. Ah! Yeah, it's got some bolstering to it. The seats are super soft and perforated and there's this durable material around the edges so it won't wear out on the bolsters, but they do get dirty really easy if you have ashy skin. You can see there's all kinds of marks over there from ashy thighs. And it wipes clean because it's weather resistant. The seats are heated and ventilated, but what's neat about it is how you control it. So when the vehicle is off, you can't see any of the buttons, but when you turn it on, Everything illuminates and these dials actually turn to screens. So if I press the dial, I can control the seat heat as well as the seat ventilation in the other direction and then press it again and it goes back to your climate control screen. The uh, steering wheel is also heated. There's a button on the steering wheel for that. There's a weird little toggle over here for your steering wheel adjustment. As far as drive modes go, this is an off-road rig. So its focus is off-road more than on-road, but I can grab the stock here on the dashboard. It kind of reminds me of a EP Civic Si hatchback. I can also slap this over and use it like a sequential. As far as traction control goes, super easy to find everything. It's all focused right here near the climate control and there's a little button that dings at you. Give this thing a little assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. Okay. That was kind of aggressive. It let me build up a lot more than I thought it was going to. Sounds so good. That's, that's good. It's quick. This sounds so good though. Good pop. There you go. Oh, the wiper cowl is painted body color. Oh, the battery is located in the rear. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Land Rover Defender 110 is the Ingenium 3 liter turbocharged and electric supercharged mild hybrid straight six. That produces 395 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 406 pound feet of torque from 2,000 to 5,000 RPM. Get a little peek of this engine. Ugh. It's a water air charge cooler up on top there. Aluminium valve cover, a little oil filter housing. That's cute. The turbo is right here on the side of the head and then it's got this big plastic housing for it looks like the 48 volt electric supercharger. As far as the ease of maintenance goes, I mean, the engine bay itself isn't really crammed. I know it looks like there's a lot going on here. The only thing that's of any concern is the fact that that's because it's a long straight six. Some of it does go underneath the wiper cowl. The steel strut tower brace integrated into the wiper cowl. You can see the aluminum strut towers, they're really far inboard. And also the engine does sit kind of dead center on there, which helps with weight distribution. Clip. Clip. It is 2,997 cc's with an 83 by 92.3 millimeter bore and stroke at 10 and a half to one compression ratio. Even though it is an aluminum block does have cast iron cylinder liners. The exhaust manifold is cast into the cylinder head where it also does have continuous variable valve timing on both intake and exhaust cams. I don't know, but just cause it's in the garage, but Fuji white is probably the best color choice for this. As far as the hill climb test goes, I'm gonna do the one that has the most articulation challenge. And uh, it's got a, we've got a lot of rain, so it's been pretty tore up in the center. That valley's deep. There's probably, in some spots, it's a good three or four foot drop into the center. So if you slide, that's a door. Got my little off-road telemetry in the gauge cluster, and also I pulled it up on the screen. I don't know if you can see it in the second GoPro, but I got the trail cams up also. I'm actually gonna use these trail cams when I'm getting up in the center here. Set my line. Tons of ground clearance and departure on this thing, so. All right. These tires are sketch, dude. They're not suited for off-road. I'm just sliding on this. 
off-road systems thinking. Really smart robots. It mitigated that no problem. Even though it's got terrible tires for off-roading, it thought about it for a second and it was very calculated. You could tell it was smart. What goes up must come down. So hill descent control. Everything is super easy to find in here located in one spot. I like that about it. And I can set my speed right here on the gauge cluster. There's a little green graph. Low traction launch for off-roading. That's kind of neat. 4x4 four four info. Ah, there's telemetry, wade sensing. Jeez, it's like halfway up the truck. Whoa, this is neat. It's like a little driving coach. Oh, and there's also a tree right here I'm trying to avoid. That makes it a little tricky because I can't take the best line because of that tree. Oh, <laughs> the dirt's so soft it's going to force me to take the line that it wants. Oh, luckily that's down glass. Okay. Uh, my foot's on the brake. I got to trust the robots. Why did I trust the robots? <laughs> I see that's why I don't I don't like hill descent controls it just it takes it a second for it to catch on there we go now it's now it's doing its thing it's crazy how close the wheels are to the edge of the vehicle when you just drive behind this thing it looks wild now this does have adjustable ride height with the air suspension so I push it down I'll put in the lowest setting for loading press this I can raise it go to the maximum off-road height it'll automatically do that too when you put it into off-road mode even though this isn't the short wheelbase 90 I want to try this obstacle over here just because of how good the dimensions are I love that it gives you the dimensions you have to be smart to build a figure that out on the fly by doing math I can't I'm not that smart well, that shows me my approach departure breakover ground clearance and I have it set in the highest setting right now on the oh I can switch it from metric to that's neat very slow no run up at it this is gnarly I want to make sure I don't high center because this is a little bit longer wheelbase I'm a little nervous Got about a foot of ground clearance, so it should be okay. But I got no rock rails on the side like you get on a TRD Pro Toyota. Even with these tires, the off-road system is so smart, it figures it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm picking some tire up in the air right there. I want a two-door one of these with the five liter in it. Too bad it costs like three times as much as I paid for my Bronco. It's plastic, but the top of it is like leather or vinyl. That's fancy. Whoever designed this thing, good job. You paid attention in art class. They give you a cute little cargo cubby thingy. I put some boxes in it. I was actually using it. And it's got some snap snaps so it doesn't go flying around. It's got some buttons to squat and raise the ass. I like the little cargo shade. It's uh, flimsy. Is that metal? Oh, it's, I think this is metal. Hey, what does this do? Oh, it's the warning triangle. That's awesome. I like the back of this door much better than the Bronco. What does this do? So it's metal. Well, it's heavy duty. Oh, wow. There's all kinds of good, there's hangers. Are you kidding me? That is bougie. It feels extremely well built. Oh, it's a heavy rear door. There is so much headroom in a Defender and it's got these awesome little portal windows. What is this? I guess you could like hang stuff on this. What is, oh, okay. The headrest looks like a robot. I have my own rear climate control. Do I have ventilated seats back here too? Aw, no, that's misleading. It looks like they would be ventilated, but it doesn't do anything when you turn it down. Oh, whoa. It's got a crazy little scissor mechanism for the armrest. They didn't have to do that, but they did. Ha, ah, rubber flooring. Easy to wash out. There's a wireless charge pad in the center console and also a cavernous area to store things down below there. The best feature of all though, if you open up the center console, 
it has a refrigerator built in and this thing gets super cold. It's got this adorable little joystick for your mirror control. It's so tiny. The doors are painted body color and there's exposed hardware on here. It's actual real hardware, not just fake plastic crap. I thought this was weird. It's super reflective gloss black for your sunglass holder, which you can look directly at the person's crotch sitting next to you. It's strange. The gauge cluster is colorful. It's all digital. There's a little Land Rover in the center. I wish that I could color match it exactly to the one I'm driving. This one has the Meridian sound system. It's super crisp and clear when you turn it up and it's fairly powerful. I like that Land Rover's infotainment system screen is not overdone. This massive distracting tablet It's just to the point and you can stay focused on the road, but it does have a ton of little Easter eggs hidden into it. Trailer and towing. Oh, air quality. It's got the crazy cabin filtration system, a CO2 scrubber. It also has voice recognition. Let's see how well does it work. Hey Land Rover, turn on heated seat. Oh, I didn't tell it which one. It's probably confused. Oh, it knew that it was the driver saying that. On top of that, the infotainment screen is actually floating. So there's storage space behind it. Another little storage cubby on the other side of the steering wheel. What stood out to me the most over the past week of driving this thing is just how smooth the suspension is with this optional air suspension package. And off-road too, massive difference that this makes. Uh, downside is though, these 22 inch wheels, I mean, they look cool, but not what I would want on a Defender. It's, I don't know, to each their own. It depends on what you buy this for. I would buy it for its off-road capabilities personally. Even on 22s, it's still comfortable. I'm trying to avoid the big puddles just because I know the people that have to wash this after and I don't want to be a bitch <laughs> and give them back a white vehicle that's just annihilated mud. Another thing that they did extremely well is the delicate balance between the interior looking purpose-built and rugged and off-road capable, but also luxurious because of how expensive this is. And honestly, if you look at the price of a Bronco Raptor versus this, I mean, the interior on this looks the price. And for the price, yes, $80,000 is a lot for a vehicle, but there's a lot of vehicles that cost that much that shouldn't cost that much today. Also the powertrain, the fact that there's an optional supercharged V8 is very alluring, but also the sound of this Ingenuum straight six and the fuel economy for it's livable for what it is. Oh, I don't know how deep this is. I mean, this thing can ford like three feet of water, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but actually that's a free car wash right there. If I had to give a criticism to the Land Rover Defender lineup in the United States, it'd be the fact that there's no diesel option available, nor is there a manual transmission option available. And I know the consumers out there that treat vehicles like appliances are like, you don't need a manual. For enthusiasts out there, especially someone that wants to buy this thing and own it for the rest of their life, a diesel and manual option would be phenomenal. It is now time to give this thing some scores. Starting with the bean score, the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the Defender 110 is getting a rating of Followed by the cookie score, the assessment of value. And as this one is equipped at about $87,000, it gets a rating of... I was thought this was gonna be over 100 grand when they dropped it off. I was actually kind of surprised. Anyway, next is the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance. It's all relative to the technician's ability level and education, but this is getting a rating of... Next is the meatball score, it's the assessment of vehicle's off-road capabilities and the Defender 110 gets a rating of. <laughs> Lastly is the Penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the Defender gets a rating of. <laughs> I love the Defender. Personally though, I would have to go for the two door obviously with the V8 because that's just, <laughs> I wish you could get the four cylinder version with a manual transmission as a, like a direct competitor for the Bronco, which I have with a manual transmission or even the Wrangler, you can get that with the manual. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.